This is Neil King for Random Acts of Cartooning. And this episode, we are going to make some model sheets. So you use these for your comic strips, animations, books, anything with characters. But first... Okay, everyone, the influence for this episode is the art of John Byrne. This is a really great older book, and I, I it was made in 1980. So this was at uh, right before and right during, I guess really, you can't say it's right before. He was right in the middle of his, probably the greatest period of his creation. So um, this is a book that I think I had, one of the first times I had ever gone to a comic book store it was probably in the early 80s. And John Byrne is like one of the great um, comic book creators. And he did all of his great stuff with X-Men and all that stuff. That's how I would have known him. But he was doing a lot of different titles. And I'm showing this one because these were a certain amount of sketches that he had had. And they just put them all together. And they're showing their different ideas, of, too, about some of the costuming uh, of things. He was always working on lots of projects. He was He did two or three books a month, at least. But his... Wolverine, uh, and all the things from X-Men, Jean Grey. They're all just so beautiful. Um, I thought I would show this book, because I think this is like a really sought-after book. It's it's something they may have reprinted. But he had had all kinds of stuff. Like, he was showing some of his stuff from uh, before he went over to DC. And it's just spectacular stuff, working on uh, all types of images that he would have drawn. And these are just character images. We're talking about model sheets and stuff. So he, these are all the important things that artists do all the time before projects. It has a little story inside here. But uh, John Byrne, one of the great greats. I love all of his work. If it's out there, this is just a spectacular book. It's small, but it's uh, right before... He really even started doing the Fantastic Four and all that kind of stuff. So, Art of John Byrne. You should get that. Okay, so let's get started. So, I have a new comic strip for Instagram called Boom Girl and Best Boy. And it's just the adventures of these two characters. And they uh, talk about movies at inappropriate times when they're in adventures where they should be trying to escape. So... Um, what I need to do, and whenever I create something like this, I go in and I use Clip Studio Paint for my line art. So I have this image. This is probably one of the first images that I kind of liked of Boom Girl. So she's kind of a little manga looking. She's got big eyes. She wears this kind of hat. And um, I want to kind of get myself ready to create um lots of panels that I'm going to be doing for this specific uh, comic strip. Um, so whenever you're drawing something again and again and again, um, you do, it, the characters tend to evolve. And sometimes um, you don't want them to evolve too much because then the character can become very different. So you want to draw the characters as much as you can before you start getting onto the pages that you actually are starting to create. So for an Instagram um, uh, format, what I tended to do is um, I looked at how many panels and things I could do for that. Um, but I also, in this case, is I try to get some guidelines for myself to figure out where I would be putting all these things. So the image you see there on the left um, is like, a, that's kind of a three-quarter um view of the character. So I, whenever I tell people when they're first starting to create characters, they should just be comfortable in drawing whatever they're drawing. So for me, what I try to do is I just draw. And once I kind of like it, the way that that character looks, then I'll go in and try to get myself into the same proportion. So when you're doing model sheets, you want to see like uh, the profile view, you want to th see a three-quarter, a front view. But for me, also, I like to just start putting all kinds of uh, expressions on their faces and all that stuff to see if I like them. Now, um, 
Now, when I start with a character like this, because I, there are many images that I had started to try to figure out what the character was going to look like, and I came down to this one. Once I decided what her overall look is, and I've even thrown some colors on there for her hat and for her shirt and, you know, the color of the skin. Once you kind of have that down, then you really are trying to figure it out, you know. And when characters like this, um, when you do a, a true profile, um, you just have to get used to the idea of what things are going to look like. And especially if they're in an action pose or things like that. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of laying in um, the basics for all this. It's a very loose pencil. Um, so, but it helps later on when you come in there and really are starting to figure things out. Now to me, when I'm drawing this character, I don't do a whole lot. You can see like here she is in situations, like this is one of the pages that I did. You see front shots like that. That's a, that's a one, but that when you have all of these separate images that you're trying to use, you gotta be used to kind of getting in there and just reminding yourself what this character looks like. Because you can really stray eventually and it'll evolve. They, I mean, if you've seen images of Charlie Brown or, um, or I always think of with Jack Kirby, the way he used to draw some characters um, from the Fantastic Four, those characters really evolved. The Hulk, you know, um, so many of them. Just because you draw them so much and you're drawing them in different positions. But to do this, what I, I did is a, a bottom layer um, in a Clip Studio where I kept it gray and then I put a layer above it. And this is what I'm doing now is kind of going in and doing an ink on top. So I keep it very manga-like. I feel like this is more manga-like looking than I usually draw uh, them like, but I like these big eyes. And, um, and then I'm just kind of going in and tightening up the, what I consider pencils on that bottom layer. So for this specific character, I tend to have the top of the lip be black and then the bottom will be red. And then for the hair, uh, it's always gonna be in her face. Um, I'm just trying to get a flow for that. And, um, but to get an idea of kind of where it starts and ends. And, um, and then just kind of going in with my uh, brush to, to get a good feel for how that hair is going to kind of move around. Um, it's strange to do something like this too because it's, you know you're, it's not necessarily from life. Uh, so it's all of your, as a cartoonist, all of your experiences of drawing and that's why it is so good to draw from life as much as you can because in a lot of times you're just remembering what it is that you see as an artist. So for here, you know, I'm always thinking of with the hair, there's lots of ways to do this, but this is just a basic sketch. So I'm not overdoing the hair. I wanna try to keep that hat nice and loose um, so that it seems like it's on her head. And once that's there, um, this is really gonna help me eventually if I'm in a story and trying to uh, use her uh, in a specific situation. So the premise of the book is they're always kind of in trouble because uh, they should be figuring out how to escape or or get the bad guy or something, but they always wind up talking about movies. And uh, so I think um, for me, these kind of characters have to be very expressive and because a lot of times they're uh, like just in, you know, in the way of you know, or about to be killed, you know, because they're in some kind of a strange situation. So um, what I've done here is I've used, uh, there's a paint bucket tool uh, and, um, and, a, and for me to just be able to go in and just find the, uh, the colors that I use, because there's really, for this specific character, there's three or four colors. So that the face, uh, the, the skin tone, cartoony, kind of skin tone a little darker than your typical one. Best Boy has a, a lighter value. But she just, you know, I'm just kind of laying it in to see what it would look like with a heavy highlight, uh, highlight there on her. And then once I have that, um, and I just use my uh, 
um, my brush tool to kind of push it in there. But, um, but the good thing about having those colors on it, and you may have seen earlier in this, I have uh, the actual, like one of the images that I just brought in to uh, Clip Studio. And I used, uh, I'm just using the exact colors. I, I want to keep that consistent. And uh, maybe I'll do a, an episode on how I'm doing pages to pages with this kind of a thing uh, for an Instagram uh, comic strip compared to doing one that is uh, that's a traditional um, comic strip that's horizontal with three or four panels and all. So again, the same hair color, just a typical color. And when when I'm kind of rendering this in Photoshop eventually. Um, that's where I have all the text and everything. Um, I just ad adapt some of it. I may put um, all kinds of little filters or highlights or stuff into them. But I try to keep it pretty simple. You can see really simple colors. I'm trying not to do too much with this. And for this model sheet, I'll probably just do like three different images instead of uh, like four or five. But just for you to get the idea of what you should be kind of thinking of uh, with this. If you don't do a model sheet, it can give you a hard time. Okay, so you're kind of just seeing what these two look like next to each other. So as always, as you know, I'm a working cartoonist, and here's some kids' books that I do. Remember, all of the books that I've created so far are all on my Amazon um, store, and you can get the get to the links in this episode you can see on the basic right up below the video. So this is My Parents Are Ninjas. This was a little series that I had done. Full color, all ages. And um, here we are with just, these are my sketches, uh, convention seasons coming up. So I usually go around, I do commissions outside of the conventions also. So also all my information to contact me is there. But I uh, love doing conventions, and here's some of the kinds of sketches I do for people as we go along. So make sure you're supporting everything we're doing here. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to kind of make one more. Because so I think you would get the idea. Maybe I'll do another kind of an expression for this one. So here I am again uh, in Clip Studio. And I have a layer where uh, you want to have your kind of what you could consider pencils. And if you have those pencils on there, then you can go in and uh, just kind of figure out what you want to do with that character. So at this point, um, I've drawn the character a few times. But, um, but by doing these sheets, I, like sometimes when I'm doing the actual uh, pages um, for the, the strip, uh, I'll come back and I'll remind myself of something that I liked about these things. I have to keep saying to myself, like, how big are the eyes? How, you know, if I'm going to get a very expressive look on these things, what should I do? And the thing about when you do comics is that you really realize that just any mark that you put on when you're drawing is very important. And all proportions are really important. So even at this, what I consider, you know, this is just kind of like pencils. I'm still kind of exaggerating sometimes because when I do the final ink part, I might come in and change up something, make, the, make something else, you know, come across, and just to get the feeling of the character. And that's all this is, is saying, all right, this is how the, uh, the character would look. And... Um, because like I say, it's you're, when you're drawing lots and lots of panels um, and trying to make things look interesting in a comic book or a comic strip, uh, you just come upon this stuff all the time. And you, before you know it, you've changed the character's overall look if you're not careful. So for this, I'm just kind of getting an expression compared to what's going on over there. And even for me, like I look at it, I'm just like, you know, is this a little too far? Should this be here? You know bump up the eyelashes or where should they be but um but then I'll go on to the ink layer 
and I'll just go right after it. I'll change, you know, you have to, the good thing about Clip Studio is it's got a lot of different brushes that you can use. And when I'm doing this kind of work, uh, I just love that they have, their brushes uh, have all kinds of settings that you can put on there to have uh, a little variety in your line. Um, I don't use Photoshop's um, line art uh, or pens as much as I do for this. I, I, they, they're close and I'm working on it to try to use it more by itself. But when it comes down to it, I always keep coming back to um, Clip Studio, which used to be Manga. Uh, but Clip Studio really just has all of the really nice brushes that have variety and it just feels better like when I do it. So um, again, even for a character that's supposed to be like all scared or angry or all the different things you do, you just have to try to keep it consistent. And if you can, and specifically too, when you have characters that are always basically going to be dressed the same, um, like she's not going to be coming in in a lot of different uh, outfits um, or best boy also. They're, they're basically always in their costumes. So for me, um, it's a lot easier to, to do something like that because um, if she was wearing some other kind of thing like happens in comic books and uh, all the different types of things that I do or animations and stuff, you have to think about that stuff. And um, because your style might have a certain way that you do faces or, you know, it happens all the time with the, the comic books. They, all the women's faces look the same. They just have different hair uh, or all the men's faces look the same. So for this, I'm just trying again, like to get this nice feel of she's surprised and something and, uh, and but she's in her basic costume with this hat. Uh, and I usually have the, uh, the logo that I put in Photoshop when I eventually do it. So that's why I don't have it here when it's a part of her uh, costume. And again, it's just you getting, you know, in tune with this character that you've created. And it's, it's really hard, like it's really hard to keep a character looking exactly the same. Uh, so anybody, anytime you see a comic book and you're reading it and you realize that you never have a question about who that character is every single time you see them, it's just because of the skill of the illustrator um, that you, you know, you're just doing that. Like you're so used to it because they did a great job with uh, the continuity. So that's what model sheets are all about. So again, I, I uh, use my eyedropper to uh, get the color above. And it probably is hard to see on this thing that that's how I did it. But uh, to get the flesh that I use for her, and again, her flesh is different than Best Boy's, who's even more cartoony. Um, so I just kind of go in, I leave some highlights, gives a little dynamic feel. And, um, and I just kind of move through it. I really, I like doing these kind of things. Um, and I know myself, like sometimes I'll just get an idea for something and I'll just kind of get started. I'll put people right into comics, uh, into the pages and stuff. And I have to, to remind myself to do these kind of things because this really does help when I get there further. And whether I consider these to be very finished looking, um, having gone through the process, you, you definitely look at it as a, uh, as an influence of how you're going to do the overall pages, whether they're, you know, in more silhouette or the, all the different types of things that can happen once you're in a, a scene, like the scene that they were in for the first strip I did, you know, they're at this giant, you know, cheese grater that they're trying to escape from. But, uh, but it can be dark, it can be really light, it can be underwater, there could be a million things that these characters would have to be around. And you, as a cartoonist, have to be aware of it and be kind of ready to, to put them into these situations. So I'm just kind of putting in the brown of her hair. It's all consistent. 
it's easy to see. And you get a sense, like uh, it gives me, you know, just dealing with that hat alone um, on a head is, uh, is something that you have to get used to doing. I don't have a lot of characters who have that kind of, um, it, like a hat like that. So by drawing it again and again, you, you know, it just becomes second nature. And, um, and I do enjoy feeling comfortable with a character where I'm not questioning whether their nose is too big or their, you know, uh, their eyes are too small or all the things like, you know, it's good to get used to them to the point where you're just kind of doing it. So I'm coming down to the end of this here. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this. Make sure you're doing lots of model sheets for all your new characters. And make sure that you're liking and subscribing to the channel. Um, I'm trying to do a lot of different content. See you soon.